peace, shalom, family, most high in Christ bless, most high in Christ bless. Shalom, 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 shalom. <laughs> Pray everybody's well on this uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. It's hump day. I need that camel to walk through. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> uh, it's hump day, man. Damn. All praises. All praises to the most high. We're going to get started in about another minute. The Lord willing. Be sure to um be sure to keep brothers and sisters in your prayers, man. Be sure to keep brothers and sisters in your prayers. Um, you know, there's health issues, there's living conditions, there's uh financial constraints. It's, you know, we in captivity, man. Eating bad food, getting bad uh what do you call that? Um getting bad uh, guidance from these different walks of life and these fake, false pastors, teachers, leaders of the people, man. So we got to we gotta keep one another in prayer, man. You know, never, never stop praying for your brothers and your sisters, especially those that you know are dealing with infirmities. Um, that's half crazy, man. <laughs> All of that, you know. Send up, send up prayers, man. Send up prayers. Um, send up prayers for Captain Yadin and his household as well, man. You know, all the, all the, all the prophets, all the prophets. Be sure to keep them in your prayers. All right, all right. Let's get started. We're going to send up prayers to the Most High um, in hopes that He. Hawkins to our prayers. Uh, sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. Uh, rise and face Jerusalem. <laughs> dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your servants humbly come before thee, dear Lord, asking for your mercy and forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our forefathers, dear Lord. For we have borne their iniquities. Dear Lord, we have transgressed more than the hairs on our head, Father God, but we know thou art all power in heaven and earth. That thou hast more power enough to, dear Lord, to cleanse us, dear Lord, of all our transgressions, making us whole, Father God. For we know all the afflictions of this life come upon us because of our iniquities and how we have offended, dear Lord, since the days of our forefathers until this day. Father, we do worse than our forefathers in these last days, dear Lord. Therefore, we know we are in the end times, dear Lord, and your son, Jesus Christ, coming to redeem us from the hand of our enemies is nigh. But dear Lord, in that time, we pray that you prepare our minds and our spirits, dear Lord, for his return. Prepare our souls and minds, dear Lord, for deliverance, dear Lord. Keep us in a mindset to be delivered, Father God. That we love not this world, dear Lord, but put our mind and our focus and our spirit on thee. Dear Lord, we pray that you heal us from all our infirmities, dear Lord, of mind and spirit. We pray that you guide us and protect us while in this captivity, Father God. 
Strengthen us during this prison sentence that we have to endure, Father God, for transgressing against thee. We pray, dear Lord, for the children. We pray for our sisters who are with child, dear Lord. We pray for brothers. We pray for uh, uh, sisters. And we pray for marriages. We pray for leadership, Father God, in their households, dear Lord. Protect us, dear Lord, and exalt thy people. Cast down the enemy, dear Lord, that the world may know that thou art God. In all things we glorify thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All praises to the Most High. <laughs> All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. Tupelo, Mississippi. That's my. That's my. That's my joint right there. Um. All right. All right. All right. Is there a ranked brother online who can scribe? Is there a ranked brother online that can scribe for me? Is there a ranked brother online that can scribe for us this morning? Okay, is there a brother online that can scribe? Okay, guess not. <laughs> going once, going <laughs> twice. <laughs> All right, we'll just start. Lord's will, uh, someone, a brother can begin to scribe post the scriptures that we're going through um, that brothers and sisters can have them as a reference point for their notes. Um, hey, Yaakov, all praises, all praises. Thank you, bro. Um, by the way, I'm Captain Shemaya with me. I have officers of car. All praise to the Lord. Um, so it's, you know, today is, uh, I was conflicting between two classes um, that uh, I did. I started one, but then, uh, was, it, was it the day before yesterday on my lunch break, a thought, a thought came to me, and I said, you know what, let me change directions because, and I, and I, I tend to go along with that because, um, it's something in the spirit that the Lord wants revealed, whether in myself or whether in brothers and sisters who are listening, because he is fully aware and conscious of who is uh, going to tune in, because he's going to send those who tune in. It's it's the Lord, right? You think it's your clever iPhone or your clever uh, <laughs> Android. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. So um, today's class is called or titled Built on Trust. We'll go into marriage and friendship, all right? Built on trust, touching on marriage and friendship. You know, marriage is like the number one topic in this truth, you know, number one, whether it's those already married as well as those who are desiring to be married. It's the number one, number one thing. And and that, I think that separates uh, Is United in Christ from a lot of other um teachers and, and camps and organizations that teach this truth you know we cover a vast um a vast variety of topics but we are definitely not um shy to 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 deal with one of the main topics because a nation is started with a family Nation building begins with a family. So that is one of the core roots of building up this nation. You build, uh, you, you get yourself built up. Then you move on to building up your household. Then you move on to building up your community and nation. There's a process. 
So we can't jump to being nation minded and surpass building the family first. It doesn't doesn't make sense or spending enough time building the family. Right. Real quick. So um, a thought just came to me. Psalms 50. Um, Psalms. I'm sorry, Psalms 51, start at verse 4. Psalms 51, verse 4. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 4. Come on. Against thee, the only, have I sinned, mm -hmm. and done this evil in thy sight, mm -hmm. that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, mm -hmm. and be clear when thou judgest. Come on. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, mm -hmm. and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Come on. Verse 7. Purge me with hyssop. So this is very, very important. Um, King David confesses that he transgressed against the Lord. And this is not class yet, but it's just a train of thought. King David noticed, uh, realized he transgressed against the Lord. So his his first order of business is to ask the Lord for mercy, right? And he's asking the Lord to cleanse him, but he's very detailed in the cleansing process because we are filthy, filthy, filthy. And we need to be cleansed as thoroughly as possible, right? Go ahead. Purge me with hyssop, mm -hmm. and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Mm -hmm. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out, blot out all mine iniquities. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So not only do we want to be cleansed of certain things, not only do we want to be purged of certain things, but we also want the Lord, when he pulls certain things out, to add a right spirit, to add an upright mindset, to add um, righteous speech, things of that nature. So David says, listen, yeah, purge me, pull out all of the filth that's in me, but don't leave me an empty shell. Place the goodness of your mercy, your charity, your forgiveness, long suffering, all these things in me to make me what? Better, right? Go ahead. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. The, the last part is before I begin to teach anyone anything or able to be an example, I have to get right first. I have to fix me first, right? Read that verse again. Verse 13. <clears throat> then will I teach transgressors thy ways, mm -hmm. and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Because hypocrites aren't converting anybody. I'm going to tell you straight. Hypocrites aren't converting anybody. You have to actually walk the walk as you talk the talk. Right? Give me that in Second Ezra. Set thine house in order. Is it 13 or 14? 14. 14. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 13. <coughs> now, therefore, set thine house in order. So the first process is getting yourself right. Ask the Lord to cleanse you, fix you, purge out all the things out of you that need to be purged and to add a right spirit in you. The next step is to read that again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. After you set yourself in order, your next order of business is to set your house in order. Oftentimes, we... How do I say? We start on from the wrong end. You hear your Israel, you hear you got to keep the commandments of God, and you immediately go home and start... Uh, uh, 
<laughs> you you swing open the freezer, you start throwing all the food out, you start going crazy, so on and so yeah, throw the food out. I'm not saying don't get rid of the pork out of your damn the, the what's that the the chit the chitterlings out of your freezer. I ain't saying don't do that. But we will turn our home into turmoil instead of focusing on turning ourselves inside out. Meaning Fix what's on the inside. Get your mind right. You can't still be smoking weed and popping pills and then talking to your wife about how she still wears pants and she's wicked. Bruh. And oftentimes, that's what we do. That is what we do. We go, we go crazy. Uh, take the Christmas tree, throw it down, throw it down the stairs. You know, dropping the, the people's elbow on it. We doing all of that. But... You, you still you still got side holes. You still you still you know doing all manner of filth. All right, we got to get ourselves right. So set read that again. Second Ezra chapter fourteen and verse thirteen. Come on. Now therefore set thine house in order, and reprove thy people. Wait. So remember, David said, "Fix me, then I will teach transgressors thy way, and sinners will be converted." The next step is get your house in order and do what? And teach your people as well. Because it deals with both spectrums in the sense that you still have to fix yourself being in a, mari in a, in, in a marriage. But you have to fix yourself if you're single as well. Now, if you're married, guess what? You fix yourself, you get your house in order, and then you teach your people. Go ahead. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And now renounce corruption. And you have to renounce corruption, right? So now let's get to the class. Um, built on trust. Trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. I'll read it again. Trust is the firm belief in the reliability truth ability or strength of someone or something there has to be a level of reliability in someone or something therefore you place your trust in them or in it hmm. trust let me have ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Come on. Two are better than one mm -hmm. because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So now it shows you that two are better than one, right? So, but even in two being better than one, there has to be a level of trust that the person you have chose to be that friend, that companion, to be that uh, spouse will actually lift you up when you fall. Because scriptures tell us in Sirach about having a multitude of unprofitable children. So if the two that you choose is someone close to you, but is a, a, a counselor according to his own will, or is unprofitable, how can that person lift you up when you fall? So you have to somewhat prove to this person to be reliable, to be worthy of your trust. So read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Come on. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm -hmm. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Mm -hmm. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. So it says, woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Because being, uh, most high said it's not good for man to be alone. Right? The Lord made us a people that needs communing. I'll say that again. The way we're designed as a people, we're designed to be a community. Hence, the Lord giving us uh, Leviticus chapter 23, where we are commanded to come together on his feast days. 
we are designed to be communal. Okay, we're not designed to be lonely lights. We're designed to come together, as it tells you in Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse 25, that we can encourage one another as we see the day approaching. He gave us these commandments to come together, be communal, exhort one another, uh, lift each other up, um, correct one another if necessary, right? In order to build each other up because the day is approaching. We were designed this way, right? So woe to that one that is alone, that decides, listen, I don't want to be the way the Lord made me, communal. No, I don't want to keep the feast days, whatever the case may be, together. I don't want a spouse. I want to stay alone. And scripture says, woe unto them. But read that again. Read that last verse. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Mm -hmm. For he had not another to help him up. So he has no one to depend on or rely on, according to the definition, in order to strengthen them. Firm trust, firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. There's a level of strength and reliability when you have that too. Because they'll be able to lift you up when you fall and vice versa right go ahead verse 11 again if two lie together then they have heat mm -hmm. but how can one be warm alone now solomon went deep on this he says listen if there's a need of heat of body heat exchange the cold remember the ice storm hit about a month ago it's like man you ain't you ain't want to be in that ice <laughs> storm by yourself nah you need a hey, boo boo come in that's that's when that's when, uh, you know, the plus size lady, you like, hey, mama, you know. <laughs> now, what's that? Cuffing season, that's what they call it. Cuffing season. She got a couple extra pounds on her. You know, it's cool during the wintertime. You know, we burn the fat when the summer start coming in. But right now, girl, you need to plump up a little bit because it's cold out here. You know what I'm saying? Here go, here go a couple cupcakes. Come on. <laughs> plump up during the wintertime. Them nights be cold. Nights are cold, sister. It's all right. We start burning the fat when the birds start chirping outside, when springtime start coming. We burn the fat then. But right now, I need you to uh, 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 get a little closer to me, sister. All right? Two are better than one. So the scriptures say, bring yourself over here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, read. Verse 12. Come on. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So it says a threefold three cord is not quickly broken, meaning you have that community or you have multiple brothers and sisters you can rely on and put your trust in, right? <clears throat> Third John 1 and 12. Third John 12. It's only one verse, one chapter. Third John verse 12. Third John verse 12. Mm-hmm. Demetrius had good report of all men mm. and of the truth itself. Oh, and of the what? And of the truth itself. Uh-huh. Yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. So now, two are better than one, and three-fold cord is not easily broken, meaning that community, right? That, that communal space, that congregation if they're all doing as the Lord says, they are tight-knit and can't be broken apart, right? But the scripture says, the person that, the two that's better than one, the person that you have deemed to be in that space with you has to be of a good report. So read that again. Verse 12, mm -hmm. Demetrius had good report of all men mm -hmm. and of the truth itself. It says all men, had a good report of this man. So now when you think about when it says two are better than one, it's not going to be according to, I like to smoke weed, they like to smoke weed. It shouldn't be that. Your two that you're joining yourself to, that you're finding companionship or friendship with, should be someone of a good report. And it says of all men, 
of all men. Go ahead. Yea, and we also bear record. Mm -hmm. And ye know that our record is true. Mm -hmm. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. Mm -hmm. But All right. So let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. Come on. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among your seven men of honest report, hmm. full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, mm -hmm. whom we may appoint over this business. So, <clears throat> one thing we have to, is gonna, you're going to find consistency in, is someone being able to vouch for those being used. OK, whether it be for your companion, whether it be for work in the body, so on and so forth, or any personal business you may want to do with the person. Guess what? You have to be able to get a good report of that brother or that sister. Perfect example. If you want to prove someone this is why we, we can't. This is what the scriptures say. It's not what it's not what is united in Christ says It's what the scripture says. You should get a report of that person because there are things that uh, brothers and sisters will counsel about. Brothers and sisters will do in the body that we may have to address behind the scenes that you may not be privy to. So you might want to get that report. No, I'm not saying might want to. You damn well need to get that report. <clears throat> because guess what? Even even we don't you know, you know how how funny that is. Even when we want to spend time around brothers, right? You know, brothers get together, you know, hang out, go over scripts, maybe go grab something to eat, so on and so forth. Someone who you're going to start spending time with, we, we're going to get to it. The scripture says prove a friend, right? But that proving process is also in the report you get. Because if you're unskillful in discerning spirits, you in here a year, you don't know anything. You still, you're still, your mind is still according to the world. I'm gonna be honest with you. Your mind is still according to the world. So therefore, you're trying to prove a friend according to what you know in the world. And you wonder why it doesn't go too well. You, 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 you disclose, you tell someone, seek, they disclose your secrets, they black, put it all through the school, everybody knows your business, so on and so forth. Because you have not vetted that person in the way the scripture says to vet them. You have not said, you know what, hey, you know, I've been hanging out with, you know, brother such and such, you know, seem like a cool brother. And, you know, I'm, I want that, you know, brother, it says two are better than one, to hang out with. You know, we could, we could, we could build each other up. But, hey, what do you think about this, brother? I never hear that. The only time I may get asked a report is when, hey, I'm interested in this sister. Hey, what's the report about her? Oh, I'm interested in this brother. He, uh, what was his report? We'll get that occasionally. But even with you proving a friend as far as that person being your companion, that's your road dog, whatever you want to call him, we don't ever get that. I, at least I haven't. I've never been asked that. Hey, listen, this his brother seemed cool. We hung out a couple times, you know, before I, you know, you know, we keep hanging out or whatever case. I want to know, hey, is this a good brother? Like, or am, I, or am I judging him according to my worldly standards? Am I judging him according to my worldly standards? Because I'm carnal. I'm carnal. You know, I'm, I'm trying to stay in the spirit, but I'm carnal. So I don't want to make sure it's a spirit that's on me that's, uh, that's causing us to have that bond. And that's uh, with the spirit that's on him. This is how we, when you really want to prove a friend, you're going to ask questions. Because you have those who are more seasoned in the spirit than you that have, that have whether it be counseled, dealt with, or seen things in this person. I'm just saying, what do I know? I don't know anything. You know, just, I'm just a Negro with a Bible. I don't know. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 20, 41, verse 13. Sirach 41, 13. Sirach 41, 13. And you got to think about it, man. This, these are brothers and sisters that you're going to have in your house, that your children will be around. And you don't want to be the one who has uh, done yourself a disservice in that proving process. All right. 
you you know uh your brothers know where you work you know stuff like that and you haven't done your due diligence in proving them oh you you yeah yeah then you find out they're bugged out now they know where you live now they know where you work you be sitting at you be sitting at work biting your nails hoping that they don't show up at your job you be at the house looking through your blinds like is that is that his car driving by because he crazy now i'm just saying Ecclesiastes 41, verse 13. Sirach, chapter 41 and verse 13. Come on. A good life had but few days, mm -hmm. but a good name endureth forever. So you want to make sure that when it's scripture says two are better than one, when you're trying to become two with someone, whether it be a spouse you're trying to prove or someone to be your spouse and or just a friend or companion in this truth, it says that person should have a good name so therefore this is where the reporting process comes in you get a good report of the person or you get a report of the person if it be good meaning they have a good name then you can continue with your process accordingly right we'll read that one more time sirach chapter 41 and verse 13 mm -hmm. a good life had but few days mm -hmm. but a good name endured forever a good name is going to endure forever and this is what we read um, uh, in, uh, in Third John, that uh, Demetrius had a good name among everybody. Demetrius had a good name among everybody. The apostle said, and we bear record. And you know our record is true. Meaning everyone should have, so all the leadership here would have a, 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 a similar um, point of view or outlook on that brother or that sister. Because what? They're not a respecter of person. So an officer would have the same um, perspective as a captain or a deacon. It wouldn't be, oh, deacon, that's a good brother. That's a good brother. All the officers are like, nah, he treat me like a nigga. That's, that, that's not good. That means he's a respecter of person. He's buttering up deacon and the captains, but his peers and or the men directly above him, he treats like regular Negroes. It shouldn't be so. Everyone should have the same um, consensus about that person. No, but read it again. So, <coughs> chapter 41 and verse 13. Come on. A good life had but few days, but a good name endureth forever. A good name endures forever. Ever, 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 ever. Go to uh, chapter 6, verse 7 now. Sirach. So, Chapter six and verse seven. Come on. If thou was get, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So now, that friend, <clears throat> that friend that you want to prove, that friend that you want to have as a companion, or deem a spouse. Here is what we're going over: the proving process must get a report they must have a good name they uh, 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 must be reliable must be able to put your trust in they must be able to you must be able to gain strength from these are all things that you kind of uh, in your discerning have to look at it's not just he she wears really nice shoes i like shoes like what in the world but that's how you gain friends when you were in the world. You have a, there's a let's say you start a new job, uh, you know, it's a bunch of people already there. You see this person dress a certain way. You know you like fashion. You know what? Let's be friends. And and literally, don't come on. I'm I know I'm not the only one. Like, damn, dude, do be wearing the fly kicks. I stay in fly kicks, okay? That's my man's. That's, that's what we do. You like coffee? I like coffee. Let's hang out. Be like, be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 what are we doing? Like, how do we even vet these people? How do we get an understanding of what their motives are? By the time many, oftentimes, by the times we we find out what their motive is, it's already too late. They've done something crazy to you, slept with your, slept with your man, uh, 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 just madness. 
that I mean madness. We are some, listen, we some low down people. All right. Yeah, we both left handed. <laughs> exactly. Like these are the these are the things that and so so I want you to understand that when the proving process is going on in this truth, it has to be totally different than what we did in the world. Because this is this has to be built on trust. There has to be a building process that happens both in the friendship and in marriage. And if you're going to prove a friend, they have to have gone through the proving process. Okay? It's not because you're both a left-handed. Why I'm now deeming this person a friend. I'm deeming this person. Okay, I see that he went through this. He went through that. And the brother overcame. Hey, I asked about the brother, you know, whatever. Because I, 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 want a, I want a brother. I could be on the phone. We talked on the phone a couple of times. Good convo. Seemed like a cool brother. But let me, let me dig more into this. Because I could be getting deceived. Because all my friends are, are my friends because we're all left-handed. It, it, it makes no sense. The way we operate while in the world is foolishness. God gives us the complete breakdown of how we should. Yeah, we're the same sign. Exactly. That's one right there. Mm -hmm. You in the who's that? You're right. You in the spirit. You in the spirit. We're the same sign. What does that even mean? We both like chocolate on Tuesdays. Perfect. It's perfect. Perfect match. And then you try to, and then you know it's crazy when you relay that to people, like, like, I like this person because, you know, we both are the same sign. And they're like, really? And they're they're intrigued by it. Like, no, this person is a freaking psychopath. No, no. You're gonna vet them accordingly, as the scripture says, right? Where were you? Sirach 6. Sirach 6. Let's go to uh, chapter 37 and verse 12. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So in your proving process, you have to be with those godly men, godly women who you know keep the commandments. You know it. You know it. Whether it be you have uh, saw them on the street outside of the Sabbath, whether it be you hear their godly discourse, you hear the way they speak, you see the way they'll correct you or another You like to eat? Me too. <laughs> exactly. You um you 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 hear you see the way that um they take correction as well as give correction if need be things of that nature, man. These are all things that you have to know before you consider this brother, this sister a friend, or deem them worthy to prove to be a spouse. All right. So read that one more time. But be continually with a godly man mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So whom you know to keep the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Now, now, listen. The scriptures tell us in, in Sirach that, uh, that uh, every flesh consorted to his kind. So I want, you to t I want you to understand this. When you choose a bugged out friend or a bugged out spouse. It means you yourself are bugged out. Because every flesh can sort to its kind. The scriptures tell you that whose mind is according to thy mind. So yeah, they keep the commandments, but they got this bugged out spirit about them. They got this this introvert spirit that uh it's, it's introvert squared. It's not the regular introvert. It's introvert times 10. I thought that was really what it was like. Huh? I was trying to see if that was really the name for it. Oh, yeah. I just, no, I just made that up. I just made that up. Yeah. You're with IUIC. So am I. Let's be friends. Yeah, exactly. I'm um, sorry. Read that one more time. 
Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. But be continually with a godly man mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, mm -hmm. whose mind is according to thy mind. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. So, who will sorrow with thee if thou miscarry? Meaning, if you're going through it, they're going to they're gonna go through it with you. If you're uh, celebratory, they're going to celebrate with you. They're going to actually be genuinely happy for your... Um, for your overcoming or, 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 or blessing or whatever the case may be, right? One more time. But be continually <coughs> with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, mm -hmm. whose mind is according to thy mind and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22 verse 1. Here is another telltale tell, tell, tell sign. You said verse 1? Verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 1. Come on. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray mm -hmm. and hide thyself from them. Whoa. Whoa. A real friend, a real companion will not see your property or you in jeopardy and then hide themselves. Meaning like, look, look, that's not my problem and move themselves away, remove themselves. Or act like they didn't see. These, this is something that we all have to examine in ourselves. And when I read that, I'm like, damn. Am I the type of friend that if my brother need help, I'm going to say, oh, somebody else will take care of it? Am I that type of friend? Am I the type of husband that if my wife is in need of something or needs help with something, I'm going to think, because this is talking about you hiding yourself being made privy like no one notices you hiding but the lord notices you is you notices you hiding read it again thou shall not see thy brother's ox it says you clearly see that your brother's property is in jeopardy you clearly see this is your brother now this is your your ace boom cool we say back in the day i'm showing my age this is your ace boom cool right here you see his property is in damage, is, is damaged. Go ahead. Or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. God says, you can't hide yourself from helping your brother. You can't. But guess what? This is what the proving process really is. The proving process has to be tried and tested. And that's going to be over time. You're gonna see who the real brother or sister really is. When, you, when you're walking to the school and you, you drop your books and they stand there and watch you pick it up. And say, hey, I got it, I got it, I'll help you. Or you're struggling with bags and they, hey, hey, let me, I got you, I'll help you with that. Let me hold the door for you. Let me do this for you, let me do that. We have to be in that space where we're willing to help one another. And it's not because it's a captain or it's a deacon or a bishop. It's because that's your brother or that's your sister. There are often times that I see a sister will have three, four, five children. And one of them is, let's say, being unruly or, or you know, a, a, what do you call ag agitated. And she's dealing with uh, uh, the child. And the other children are there, and no one says, "Let me, you need you help with the other children. You know, let me help you out." No one says. A bunch of sisters. Everybody's like, mm -hmm, "It's not my problem." I want you to think about that. These are the things you sit back and watch. But the same one who was neglectful to to a sister in need of your help. A sister was in need of your help. You think they're going to want to help you? But that's who you want to be your friend. Are you serious? No, get your mind right. The sister is there struggling with three, four, five children. You're sitting there with n n nothing impeding you, nothing uh, 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 preventing you from assisting. 
what, what's what's the problem? Hey, you know how you, all you gotta do is go like back and forth with the stroller, mm-hmm. go back and forth just to rock the rock the child. All I gotta do, I gotta get a, a good shoulder game going, rock the child back and forth in the stroller. That's all I gotta do. Is there anything I can do to help you? you want me to hold them while you go to the restroom? Sister, be going to the restroom with three kids. And no one says, do you want me to hold the baby while you go to the restroom? Nobody. You got a school of 200 women. No one has the grand idea. Let me help you. Boy, you but, but you know what Israel said? We need to buy land and build houses and do this. And t- please. When I hear that stuff, I'm like, whatever. Let me tell you something. It sounds good, but Israel ain't ready for that because Israel is unable to handle little matters in the congregation like helping a brother, helping a sister. But you want to buy 500 acres of land and build a bunch of houses with brothers and sisters who still act like Negroes. Yeah, okay. Y'all have fun living in that community. Have at it. Go right ahead. Read verse 1 again, please. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 1. Thou shalt not see Somebody the- said watching to see if she's going to drop one of the kids. You are 100% correct. That's, that's, you know what? I'm, I'm about to go off, but go ahead. Read that. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray mm-hmm. and hide thyself from them. It says you'll see your, 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 brother, your brethren's ox or sheep go astray and you hide yourself as though you don't see it. When it's obvious that you see it. All praises. Detroit is not like, yeah, Detroit isn't. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I've been to Detroit. Detroit camp is next level. Yes, I agree. Detroit, matter of fact, the the breakfast that many of you watch, when you watch Patient Saints, that we give thanks for the sisters who made breakfast for us before Patient Saints. You know, we, we get them shout outs, right? We actually got that from the Detroit camp. We went to the, we were doing Patriot States for years. We went, we visited Detroit. Detroit had this whole breakfast spread laid out for us for Patient Saints Radio. I was ashamed. I was like, damn, (laughs) we have never had this in Atlanta. Meanwhile, at the time, Patient Saints was on for like two, uh, maybe a year. A year. Because we're on like, we're on five years now. We might have been on for like two years at a time. But I was like, yo, we go, we on the radio show hungry, belly hurting, belching, farting, (laughs) everything, all kind of gas pains going on, because we hungry. So, yeah, so I know Detroit is next level, man. Shout out to uh, Captain Ezra and all the officers, man. Shout out to them, man. But yeah, all praises. Yeah, Detroit is definitely doing that thing, man. The spirit of the Lord is surely there. I pray it stays there and it spreads. I pray it spreads. So yeah, so when Detroit did that, we were like, oh, hell nah. We cussed all the Atlanta sisters out. (laughs) (laughs) They all caught (laughs) out. Oh, we gave them the business, man. But all praises to the Lord. They, 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 you know, recognized it and uh, they said, you know what? Yeah, we should be doing that. So they began to do it, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. But it, but the good works, the good works that brothers and sisters do. I think a sister Eliza is her name, the el- the older sister there. Sister Eliza, um, I-, I forget everybody's name, but when I see them, it's always a blessing because it always reminds me um, what we can do when someone has uh, goodly gifts. That's what that's what the Lord said. We should covet the goodly gifts. Just the mindset of doing something like that, that wasn't being done at all. It was definitely refreshing to the spirit. It was like, okay, all praises, man. I see brothers and sisters are being innovative and being thought, uh, thoughtful and filled with charity. It was definitely a good feeling. I, I, left, I left Detroit feeling good, man, left feeling good. And we brought that spirit back to Atlanta after we cussed them out, but all <laughs> praises to the Lord. You know what I mean. <laughs> It's definitely a blessing. Anytime brothers, listen, anytime brothers and sisters are doing good works in um uh, uh in 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 any camp that we visit, any congregation we visit, we take back the good works to our congregation because we want to uh, make it better. And the same thing with brothers and sisters travel here, 
they take back certain things back to their camp, to their congregation and to make it better because ultimately it's about bettering the nation, right? But let's see something we need to better right here. Read it one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 1. Come on. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray mm -hmm. and hide thyself from them. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. So it says in, ev in every way you should bring them to thy brother. Don't hide yourself. So this is this is a challenge. When you see uh, the sisters struggling with the multiple children and the bags or whatever the case may be, are you willing to assist that sister? And I see, I see mainly on the sister side, not so much on the brother side. Brothers will help out. Brothers will help out. When it comes to sisters, eh, I, I don't want to... I just want to sit here and look cute. I don't really want to. It's going to mess up my garment. It's going to get wrinkles. Uh. It's really going to take a change right now. I'm about to really go <laughs> off. But I'm really trying to hold back. Like, Go ahead. You going to say something? No, I was going to say, I've actually seen where um, single brothers will have their children over there. Mm -hmm. And the sisters won't offer to take the child. Right, time. right. Brothers be struggling. Yeah, it says a couple of single fathers. They got small children. And one, one of them, he's he's handicapped. And he has a small children. And sisters won't. We need help with the bait with the little man. They'll just sit there and watch him struggle. <sighs> um, let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 9. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, verse 10. So this is... Built on trust, marriage, and friendships, right? 9 verse 10, come on. Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 10. Forsake not an old friend, for the new is not comparable to him. Mm -hmm. A new friend is as new wine. Mm -hmm. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. So now, what does that mean? Time is going to prove a friend. Time is going to prove a friend. How do you know that a new friend is not comparable to an old friend. The old friend has been through thick and thin with you. You have time that you have tried them, time that you have uh, learned them, that you have vetted them and, 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 and you know, given them certain, uh, what it be, secrets or what have you, and they haven't revealed it. They've actually... It's not sin, so they held it in, they counseled you, they guided you, and they talked you off the ledge. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> right. And they say, oh, he's a good dad. Right. A exactly, exactly. Um, so time is going to prove that new friend if they're worthy to be that old friend. Right? It's only time time. Sometimes we think that the proving, and this goes right back to um, the marital portion. This is why we tell brothers and sisters, just wait, just wait because it's the only thing that is on your side is time. Time. But oftentimes we don't give time its due justice. We don't. We think, oh, I, I know this person. Yeah, we've been proven for a year, and I know them. You've actually been proving for 52 days. 52 Sabbaths, right? Mm -hmm. 52 Sabbaths. Plus a, a, few, a few, let's say, let's call it, uh, let's even push it. Let's say 60... Sixty-four days, right? Because there's no. I'll go a little further. Seventy-five days, new moons, feast days, Sabbaths. So let's say seventy-five days. So you're not proving someone for a year. You're proving them for seventy-five days because that's when you see them. Let's be honest. That's when you see them. You see them on those days. They're on their best behavior on those days. Um, they keep their, their speech upright on those days. Yeah, you talk on the phone, but 
personally, let me tell you something. Personally, I'm not a big phone person because I like to see people's countenance. I like to see their mannerisms because sometimes the words can come out all smooth. Matter of fact, where's that in Sirach where it says a man hangeth his head low, but in really is deceit. Um, Sirach. Just look it up. Just look it up. It says, uh, hang, hang, hang head low. Um, how's it go? Everybody knows what that is. Um, there's a man that hangeth his head low, but inwardly he's full of deceit. That's what it says. Sirach 1926. Read that. Thank you. Just to show you. Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 26. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, mm -hmm. but inwardly he is full of deceit, mm -hmm. casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Mm -hmm. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief, mischief before thou be aware. So it says, where he is not known. That's the part I wanted. Where he is not known. Because in the in the congregation where he's known, they know him to be a deceitful man. So what does he do? He'll travel to another congregation where they don't know him. And then he'll show his real wickedness. This is why, personally, I'd rather deal face to face. Because you'll see him hang his head down. But you'll be like, ah, oh, he's full of crap. You see what I'm saying? Because it's in person. Over the phone... You can't see the countenance. You can't see the 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 the, the shifty, shifting of the eyes or the shaking of the hands or the or the fidgeting. Mm -mm. You can't you can't see that. So yeah, that's fine. I'm not saying don't talk. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't talk on the phone or or some are not genuine on the phone. But personally, I'd rather be in person. So let's just count it as that. So you talk on the phone and you spend 75 days in the same congregation. And now you say, I'm ready for marriage. But I understand because some brothers, some sisters were married after uh, a, a, a weekend trip to Cabo Saint, to Cabo Saint, whatever, whatever. Or to uh, 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 Jamaica. They met somebody for the weekend in Jamaica, came back and got married to them. So I understand. 75 days is actually a long time for a lot of you brothers and sisters. <laughs> I'm going to tell you straight. 75 days is probably an eternity compared to what you used to do. A chance meeting in a, in a, in a, in a Target parking lot turned into a, a hot-filled sex for a whole weekend, and then y'all standing in front of the judge on Monday. I'm just going to call it what it is. It is what it is. I'm just saying. Let's go back. Um, go to actually go to Ecclesiasticus 19, verse 4. Sirach chapter 19 and verse 4. He that is ha hasty to give credit is light minded. So the scripture says if you're hasty to credit someone, you are simple. You are simple, you're silly. You are um, light-minded. You're foolish because you're so hasty to give someone credit or credence when they're they're not even deserving of it yet. Because you haven't proven them. You haven't proven them. Proven them. Got an exotic brother from Jamaica. The hell is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly, man. Now, I'm being I'm being dead serious. Like. To some people, 75 days is a long time. I'm telling you straight. I'm telling you straight. 75 days is a long time. They'll be ready to be married after a weekend with someone. I'm telling you. I, I'm, I'm trying to dial back. I'm trying to dial back. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 37, verse 1. Uh, Ecclesiastes 37 and verse 1. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 1. Come on. Every friend saith, I am his friend also. Mm -hmm. But there is a friend which is only a friend in name. 
So there's someone who's only a friend according to the title. Go ahead. Is it not a grief unto death when a companion and friend is turned to an enemy? So here's the thing. A companion or a friend can easily turn into an enemy. But it's it's not it's not um it's not according to the fact that you were tested and found to be tried and true. You were found to be tried and true. So a person can turn into an enemy, yes, if they get the devil on them, yes. But also if you have not proven them well enough. You don't know them well enough. So you tell them all your information. You tell them everything about you. Meanwhile, you got to really evaluate. Have they really revealed the same amount of information about themselves to me? Huh. No. They know everything about me, but I know nothing about them. The conversation is one has always been one-sided. Because some of you just love to talk. You love to talk. And you could really care less if the other person is, is participating in the conversation as much as you are. You just, you just want to talk. So now when that person turns to an enemy, revealing all your business, you want to come talking about you suffering persecution for righteousness sakes. No, you're suffering because you're a fool. You're simple. Hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3. O oh, wicked imagination, mm -hmm. whence camest thou in to cover the earth with deceit? Mm -hmm. There is a companion which rejoiceth in the prosperity of a friend, mm -hmm. but in the time of trouble will be against him. This is when your friend turns to an enemy. In your time of trouble, they actually make your troubling time worse. Hmm. Go ahead. There is a companion which helpeth his friend for the belly. So this is what you have to find out. Is this person, as we read in Deuteronomy 21, is, are they going to hide themselves when I'm in need or my property is in need? Or are they going to only help because they think they're going to get something out of it? Um, you have to prove a friend and not be hasty to credit. Read that again. Verse 5. There is a companion which helpeth his friend for the belly, mm -hmm. and taketh up the buckler against the enemy. Mm -hmm. Forget not thy friend in thy mind, and be not unmindful of him in thy riches. So what, does, what, is, what is this saying from verse 1 to verse 6? Again, you can't be hasty to credit. Don't be hasty to credit anyone why because that enemy that friend can turn into an enemy if you don't go through the process correctly right right when you really need them where where are you where are you and a lot when we have to we have to we have to really and and again this goes into the examining ourselves process the examination process Sometimes we have these little attributes in us, not, on a posit not in a positive sense, that we have to ask the Lord to remove. Hiding ourselves when our friends are in need, thinking we're going to get something out of our friendship, have benefits. That's the only reason we're really friends. Because that friend has a car, you don't. So you're their best friend because you're able to borrow their car from time to time. But the minute that car breaks down, all of a sudden, it's not, A, I'm going to give you some money to help you fix it. Being that I drive the car, it's, damn, your car done messed up, bro. What you going to do? That's when the chop to the throat happens. Nigga. Mm. But that's what, you, that's, that's what we get. They're friends when, they ha when, you, when they, they're actually milking you. They're milking you. So when the car breaks down that they obviously get a chance to use very often, they now step out the broken down car, give you a call. Hey, man, your car broke down, man. Where is it? Oh, it's on such and such, such and such. All right, man, I holler. I got to catch an Uber. I got to go. And then you don't, you, all, you don't hear from them again. All you do, you see them on the Sabbath. You're like, bruh, 
You just left my car. You 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 drive it all. You drive it more than me. Dang, hey, you got that car fixed yet, bro? I was I meant to call you, man. I meant to call you. Says that the scripture says that you have friends that are friends for their belly, meaning what they can get out of you, they're going to get out of you, and not really give a damn about when you are in need. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of you want to bring people into your home to help them with their living situation, right? So yeah, they, 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 they're staying with you because they need help. And that's fine, you help them out. But to the person being helped out, I want you to be very mindful of the fact that you can also contribute to that household. So you're unable to pay rent, but you are, whether it be stacking your money, you are, um, you, you're uh, still working. You can contribute something to the house, whether it be light bill, food, whatever the case may be. Because the person may have not asked you to pay rent, but you can contribute something. That's why I'm alone. This this is not to. What we started with is says two are better than one. So we're not supposed to be alone. We're not supposed to. Be. I know sometimes some circumstances cause us to be alone, but we're not supposed. We're not built that way. We're not built that way, right? Yeah, you read clean. This you have to be able to contribute something because the funny thing is, you can help someone with their living situation. They come stay with you. They can save their money, get their own place. But if the shoe was on the other foot, would that person do the same for you? That's the question. So let's go to let's go a little bit more into the marriage section. Let's go to Tobit, the book of Tobit, five. And we're going to start at verse one. Tobit chapter five and verse one. Tobias then answered and said, "Father, I will do all things which thou hast commanded me. Mm -hmm. But how can I receive the money, seeing I know him not?" Mm -hmm. Then he gave him the handwriting, and said unto him. Seek thee a man which may go with thee, whilst I yet live, and I will give him wages, and go and receive the money. Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael, that was an angel. So, the scriptures tell us that Tobit sent his son Tobias to go and retrieve some money for him. But he needed a companion. He wanted a companion to go with his son. Right? Continue to read. Verse 4. Verse 5. Verse 5. But he knew not. And he said unto him, Canest thou go with me to rage to rages? So he asked Raphael, Can you go with me to rages? Go ahead. And knowest thou those places well? He says, So I, I need you to go with me to rages if you can. And do you know the area? Do you know the route? Right, go ahead. To whom the angel said, I will go with thee, and I know the way well, for I have lodged with our brother Gabe, Gabel. Gabriel. Gabriel. Then Tobias said unto him, Tarry for me till I tell my father. So he says, Wait, wait for me. Let me go tell my father that you know the way, that you've stayed in the region before. Let me go tell my father. Go ahead. Then he said unto him, Go and tarry not. So he went in and said to his father, Behold, I have found one which will go with me. Then he said, call him unto me, that I may know what tribe he is, and rather he be a trusty man to go with thee. So now, hmm. here is Tobit with his son Tobias. And he says, listen, I need to know this man that's going to go with you to rages. Because I have to know if he's trustworthy. Can I rely on him? Can, will he keep you strengthened on the journey? Will he protect you? If need be. Go ahead. Verse 9. So he called him and he came in. And they saluted one another. Mm -hmm. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art. Mm -hmm. To whom he said, 
doest thou seek for a tribe or family, or an hired man to go with thy son? Then Tobit said unto him, I would know, brother, thy kindred, uh, their kindred and name. He says, I would know, brother, thy kindred and name. So here's what Tobit is doing. Tobit is really examining this brother that's going to go with his son. He's examining him. He says, listen, I got to know what family line you come from, because that's going to tell a lot about you. It's the same process we went over earlier with you trying to find out or gain a report of someone. Many of us, our parents aren't in this truth, so you can't go through the family <laughs> line. You come from a family of idolaters. Your mama burning candles with Caesar Borgia picture on it right now in the kitchen. Okay? Your pops got uh, 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 your mama's panties buried in the backyard so she won't leave. Mm. These are the things that people do, trust me. These are the things that they do. Or oh, got your, your daddy's boxes in the freezer so he won't leave. Okay? No, no, no. Many of our brothers and sisters, their family is not in this truth. So those spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, as it says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, are the ones who would be able to give credence to that report or give some, um, uh, 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 what do you call that? Some, I don't know, read. Verse 12, <laughs> then he said, I am Azarias, mm -hmm. the son of Ananias the Great mm -hmm. and of thy brethren. So uh, uh, celestially and terrestrially, one is Raphael and one is Ananias. When he's among men, He's Ananias, all right? But he talks about the lineage of the brethren. He says, we're from the same brethren, meaning these angels also have tribes, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. Um, so what, he, what, what Tobit, Tobit is asking about is about his family line, right? Go ahead. Then Tobit said, thou art welcome, brother. Mm -hmm. But not now angry, but be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family, for thy for thou art my brother, mm -hmm. of an honest and good stock. He says he comes from an honest and good stock. You know when that happens as well. We'll tell a, a sister a um. <laughs> We, we'll tell a sister, hey, listen, this brother here, he's a good brother. Come on, it'll be a deacon or a bishop recommending this brother. And sisters will be like, nah, he's not my type. Wow. That's not how our forefathers got down. We inquired about the family line. Oh, you come from a good stock. You're being recommended by the bishop? Oh, this pff, man. Who 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 else going to recommend you? Yo, your daddy that's that's uh 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 praying to 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 <laughs> to to see yeah, to Caesar Bo or come see come swa or whatever he worship, that's who you want to report from. You got a bishop or a deacon talking about how how good of a brother this is, and you talking about it's not your type. I'm, it's about to turn again. I feel, you know what I feel it. I feel it when it's about to go left, and I'm like, let me just reel it back so I can stay on focus. Focus with class. This goes right back the same way we chose friends in the world. We come into this truth and choose spouses according to the same mindset. And it's not right. It's not right. I'm going to tell you straight. It's not right. It's not right. It's not. And it has not been really working out too well for brothers and sisters that do that. If you're if you are if you're if you are choosing a spouse with a repented mind, that's different. But according to the mind you had before you came in here, it's not going to work out. They be trying to kill each other, hit each other with cars, all kind of madness, man. I mean, literally, bro. And then says, oh, no, I, I, I stopped short. Brother, you was doing 70 miles in her direction. Like, you Damn. literally, <laughs> it was the angel that put his hand on the car. Like, yo, bro, you're not about to kill your wife, yo. Damn. This is... But that's what these backdoor marriages do. You think, oh, oh, I found the love of my life according to the way I thought in the world. The Lord is telling you the way you thought in the world was wicked and evil. But you bring the thought process here 
you lay with someone and then you think the Lord is going to bless it. Deacon Laba said something heavy on Clubhouse yesterday. He said, you come in here and you disrespect the Lord's house by your fornicative ways, right? You think the Lord is going to bless your house once because you think you got some marriage papers? I was like, damn. So you disrespect the Lord's house, but you think the Lord is going to bless your house. I was like, damn. Mm. That was heavy. That was heavy. That's, that sums it all up right there. But you know what? The children of Israel are the most rebellious people. So many of you are going to hear this and many of you are going to fall right into that same category as if you never heard it. But you heard it. You heard it. Go ahead. For I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of the, the great Samarius. Samias. Samias. Mm -hmm. As we went together to Jerusalem to worship mm -hmm. and offer the firstborn. So he's talking about the family line. He says, listen, I know some of these men in your family. We went to Jerusalem to worship together. Oh, you come from a good stock. Go ahead. And the tents of the fruits, and they and they were not seduced with the heir of our brethren. Mm -hmm. My brother, thou art of a good stock. He says, he says, you know what? I know your uncle. I know your I know your your, your cousins. He said, listen, you come from a good family. Go ahead. Verse 14. But tell me, what wages shall I give thee? Will thou a how you say that? Direct. Where are you? Where are you reading? What verse? Verse fourteen. Fourteen. Will thou a dark? Uh, dark oh, Drakem. Drakem. That's the that form of money. Ver I'm gonna start over. Mm -hmm. Verse fourteen. But tell me, what wages shall I give thee? Mm -hmm. With thou with a Drakem a mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. and things necessary as to my own son. Mm -hmm. Yea. More so he's he's negotiating. He says, "Will I give you this type of payment?" And along with the things that are necessary to for my son to bring with him. Go ahead. Yea. Moreover, if ye return safe, I will add something to thy wages. Mm -hmm. So they were well pleased. Then said he to Tobias, prepare thyself for the journey, and God send you a good journey. Mm -hmm. And when his son had prepared all things for the journey, his father said, Go thou with this man and God, which dwelleth in heaven. Prosper your journey, hmm. and the angel of God, and the angel of God keep you company. So they went forth both, and the young man's dog with them. <laughs> Brought Scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But Anna, his mother, wept, and said to Tobiah, to, said to Tobit, Why hast thou sent away our son? Is he not the staff of our hand mm -hmm. in going in and out before us? Be not greedy to add money to money. So his wife was concerned that you're sending our son on this long journey to collect money for you. But guess what? I would rather have my son than the money. She's being a mother, right? Go ahead. But let it be as refuse in respect of our child. Let it be as refuse. Refuse is trash. It's spelled the same as refuse, but in the context, it's refuse. Let, it, let that money be just like trash to us. It's not even worth anything if I'm going to lose my son on this journey. Go ahead. For that which the Lord had given us to live with, do it suffice us. He says the little bit that we do have, the little bit we, the little bit we do have, is it not, didn't the Lord give us enough to keep a roof over our head and food in our bellies? Go ahead. Then said to Tobit to her, Take no care, my sister. Mm. He shall return in safety, mm. and thine eyes shall see him. Mm -hmm. For the good angel will keep him company, and his journey shall be prosperous, and he shall return safe. Mm -hmm. Then she made an end of weeping. I want y'all to really, really meditate on, especially that last part. She's expressing her concerns for her son being on the journey, going on his journey. She's expressing that she doesn't want to lose her son because he's going to collect money for his father. But all Tobit did was tell her, listen, the Lord is with him. He will return safely. The, Tobit put things in place in order for her, his son to return safely. He sent him with a guide, sent him with the money they needed, the belongings they needed. 
And Tobit was full of faith, knowing that the Lord was going to protect his son. But what did Anna do? Anna trusted her husband because immediately after he said that, she stopped weeping. I want you to really meditate on that. He didn't have to go into any lengthy explanation. He didn't have to do that. He says, listen, he has what he needs. He's with a righteous man of the Lord, an angel of the Lord. He's going to return safely. Don't worry. But, but I know he's with the angel of the Lord, and I know you gave him everything he needed, but, but why did you? She didn't do that. She did not do that. You don't read about our sisters, our, our foremothers, going back and forth with their husbands. You don't read that. You know where we hear about that? In Babylon the Great, the land of confusion. This shows me that the women of today do not trust their husbands as our foremothers trusted theirs. Nope. Nope. You can say whatever you want to say. Nope. I'm telling you no right now because in 1 Peter chapter 3, it says that holy women who trusted in the Lord. Matter of fact, let's get that. I didn't have that in class, but it just came to my mind. Because it might take a turn. What did I ask for? First Peter chapter 3. Thank you. First Peter chapter 3. I'm getting old, bro. You got to bear with me. First Peter chapter 3, and it's like verse 7, I think. Okay, let me one second. You look at it. Um, three and yeah, verse six. First Peter chapter three and verse six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters oh, he. Verse five. Sorry, verse five. Verse five. Mm -hmm. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. Wait a minute. The scripture says, when there's a level of trust in your marriage, when you trust in the Lord, you're going to trust in the husband the Lord gave you. It's just that simple. So guess what? When you, Because as you read down, oh, keep reading, matter of fact. Verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, mm -hmm. whose daughters ye are. So verse 5 tells you that the women of old trusted in God. Women of old trusted in God. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Why did Sarah obey Abraham? Because she trusted in God. So what does that mean when you don't obey your Lord today? You don't trust in God. Somebody drop a bomb in here. Just throw it. <laughs> it is what it is. And this is a scripture we read all the time. It ain't nothing new. But the mere fact is what we read in Tobit, when, when, uh, when Tobit said what he said to his wife, he told her, angel, the Lord is with him. He has what he needs. He'll return safely. She was immediately comforted. She did not do the back and forth with him. Why? Because the women of old time trusted in the Lord. Why didn't Sarah go back and forth with Abraham? She trusted in the Lord. Why do wives go back and forth with their husband today? They don't trust in the Lord. Where? That simple. Don't worry, sister. You could still be the exception to the rule. You could be the one out of 20 billion. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You'll be the one. You, you do that. You'll be that one. All of you sisters, that's the new challenge. Be that one. Be that. Go to Tobit chapter 2 and verse 10. Tobit chapter 2 and verse 10. Hey, sister wrote, trust in everything. The bad part is that y'all don't trust in anything. Damn. <laughs> you said, we, we, it should be everything, but it's really nothing. I'm just, I don't know. Go ahead. Tobit chapter two and verse ten. Come on. And I knew not that they were that they were sparrows in the wall. Mm -hmm. 
and mine eyes being opened, the sparrows muted warm dung into mine eyes. So rewinding a little bit more, why would, this is going into why Anna would trust in her husband, trust in her Lord, where she was comforted by what he said, right? Go ahead. And the whiteness came into mine eyes, mm -hmm. and I went to the physician, but they helped me not. Mm -hmm. Moreover, and in Chicharis, where uh, at the bottom of verse ten. Moreover, oh, Akiak, Akiak mm -hmm. did nourish me until I went into Elmas. Mm -hmm. And my wife Anna did take women's work to do. Mm -hmm. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. So Tobit's wife, she took women's work and they gave her a, 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 a small goat or baby goat on top of the wages they paid her. She did that good of a job, right? Go ahead. Verse 13. And when it was in my house, and began to cry. I said unto her, From whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? Render it to the owners, for it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. So now, why would Anna trust in her husband, like we read in chapter five? Anna was, she knew she was with a godly man, one whom she knows to keep the commandments. But we went over that earlier. When you are, when you are uh, in a position where you know your spouse keeps the commandments, you have no reason not to trust your spouse. No reason. Because you know that your husband loves and fears the Lord, our God. So here it is. He's correcting. He's like, yo, listen, I hear, because he remember he couldn't see. Dung fell in his eye. The physicians couldn't help him. He hears this baby goat, blah, blah, whatever, right? He's like, what? He's, like he's like, where the hell does goat come from? He's like, nah, go bring it back. He said, I know we're going through hard times because I can't work anymore because I'm blind. I know we can't see, but you should not have stolen that goat. Go take it back. He didn't say, well, we'll do it just this one time. A lot of, a lot of y'all know your wife is doing evil and or your husband is doing evil. And you say, okay, this is the last time. You know what? The Lord may not give you that last time. No, you bring it back. You actually restore, Scripture says restore sevenfold if you stole something. I can't trust someone who doesn't trust God. That's another topic. Especially if, it's, if you're talking about a, a husband. We'll deal with that one day. Um, Proverbs 31 and 11. Proverbs 31 Right, mm, you in the spirit, brother said, where this Louis Vuitton bag come from? Mm. Some of y'all buy Louis Vuitton bags because you stole the money out your husband's account. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But that's a whole other topic. Read that. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 11. Come on. The heart of her husband do it safely trust in her. So the, the, the mind of your husband is supposed to trust in his wife. Supposed to. The same way we just read Anna trusted Tobit is the same way we're reading about a husband is supposed to trust his wife. Right. That's what they say. That's our money. Mm. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to say it. I don't know how many times Bishop got to say it. Deacon's got to say it. cap has got to say it. You can have the account that is dealing with the bills, right? It's only the bills money in there that she can have access to, if that at all. 
everything else that you make, bro, you better have your own account. I'm telling you, because it's going to turn again. I feel it. <laughs> the thing is, our hope and prayer is that our wife endures with us until the end. But there is no scripture that says that's going to happen. And vice versa. And vice versa. So if, the, and, I, and I'm saying, damn, I'm, I'm already behind. I'm saying this because it has happened. A sister that she had the devil on her. She, when she was leaving her husband, she cleaned his account out of $30,000. And this is just at maybe three weeks after we told him, listen, bruh, take her off the account. She'd been out the spirit for a long time. I have no idea why he still had her on that account. She was on the account, and as she was ready to depart, she took every dime with her. Talk to a lawyer wasn't a damn thing the lawyer could do about it because she was on the account. And you can't, he couldn't prove that it was solely his money because they're both on the account. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. I watched the episodes of Snapped. That make that make a, 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 a brother snap. Yeah. Drive a car through 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 the front job through the job window. I'm just saying, not saying to do it, but I can understand. Ah. Read uh, uh, verse uh, ten. Proverbs chapter thirty one and verse ten. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm -hmm. For her price is far above rubies. So virtuous means having high moral standards. So this woman has to have high moral standards. How are you going to know she has high moral standards? Because you have proven her. You have proven her. How are you going to know this? You know this man to keep the commandments because you have proven them. And let me tell you something. Brothers, let me, let me hip you to something. There are more wives in this truth that are pleased to dwell than those that really believe right. i'm a i'm only trying to help you because some of you have to learn how to deal with your wife according to knowledge De deal with her or dwell with her according to knowledge the knowledge is she she doesn't believe she's pleased to dwell she's only here because of you and the proof of that is every time a brother bugs out the wife goes to it's like, I, I thought, but I thought you believed. I thought you was here. You, you carry out the cups and you, you know, you, you, you got the food for Leisure. You on the kitchen team. You on the, 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 the children's team helping out the kids. But when your husband bugs out, you say, F the kids. Hmm? How you, how you were teaching the kids room, teaching the young, the young generation of Israel, your husband bugs out. You don't see the division is still to teach the children of Israel. You say, you know what? To hell with those kids. I'm going with my bugged out husband because you did not want to be here in the first place. You're just abiding your time and you're hoping, you're hoping that it's just a phase your husband is going through. But many of us will say, no, my wife believe. Hey, how many of y'all would, if you, if, you, if you left here, would your wife still come? Or you passed away, would your wife still come? Brother, you put up their hands. Ah, my wife would come. <laughs> She's super duper righteous. Soul glow. <laughs> you can't, you, no. You, you, your, you, bro, your wife, you, put your hand down. Mm. Put your hand down. She's pleased to dwell. Thank the Lord for that. Because she's not stressing you out in the keeping of the commandments. She keeps the house in order because she loves you. Lord's will, one day she believes. Lord's will, that's your, that should be your prayer. Lord's will, one day she, she fully believes. Yeah, oh, psh, she, waiting to eat shrimp. She got the coupons in her bag right now. Mm. Got the two, two, uh, two for five pack of, two for five pack of uh, scrimps. She got it in her purse right now. Waiting for your behind. <laughs> so glow. Waiting for your behind to go. I'm telling you. I'm more, more of those than those who really believe. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Proverbs 12 and 4. I'm going to end it soon. Proverbs 12 and 4. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame 
is as rottenness in his bones. So that same virtuous woman of high moral standards, she's like a crown uh, on up atop her husband's head. Because he's 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 really held in a king kingly manner. She respects him, she honors him in the manner according to the scriptures. Right? Psalms no. Yeah, Psalms 118, verse 8. I'm almost done. Psalms, chapter 118, and verse 8. Yeah, hey, Lahab, that's crazy, right? It says, a, a sister will be in the truth for one to five years, get married, and be pleased to dwell. Damn! Let me take a sip. Hey, you know what? It's funny. A lot of some, not a lot, some sisters will give the appearance, and brothers too, brothers do it too. They will give the appearance as believers only to trap you. This is why, listen, the, the whole earlier part of the class is about proving a friend. You want to do your due diligence to make sure you're not taking on a non-believer it happens it it literally happens but it's it, i saw somebody said it so the, i won't get married no it's not that you don't get married you have to really prove a friend that's what I, that's that's what i'm saying i'm not saying don't get married <laughs> because there are many righteous marriages in israel all praises to the most high but you also have that other side of the spectrum where if you don't prove correctly i'm, I'm gonna say this I counseled someone recently, and I told them this. You were horrible at proving. Because as I got into the deeper recesses of their marriage, oh, bro, you are, you are horrible at proving. The sister showed you who she was, and you ignored it. She was rude. She was obnoxious. She was disrespectful, not only to you, but to sisters as well. And you still married her. I was like, bro, you are a psycho. You are a living psychopath because if she showed you who she is and you married her knowing that, why the F are you complaining about it right now? Because everything she is right now, she showed you before she got married. Uh, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. She showed you that. Oh, she did this when you approved. What, were you married? No, we were proven and you still married her. You're a nut job. You are a nut. I'm, I'm sorry. You can be absolutely horrible at proving. I don't know why that's so hard to believe. Horrible at proving. What, what's your favorite color? Blue. What's yours? Red. We like similar colors like the American flag. Perfect. Perfect. We're a match made in heaven. You are retarded. <laughs> I don't know. Read that, man. Psalms chapter 118 and verse 8. Come on. It is better to trust in the Lord mm -hmm. than to put confidence in, a, in man. So this is what it all boils down to. Your proving process of a friend, because two are better than one, is going to helm from your trust in the Lord. You're going to do it as the Lord says. It's not as man says, but as the Lord says. So that's where you're going to put your trust. When you're dealing with your spouse, you're going to put your trust in the Lord, not as your spouse said, if it's contrary to what God has said. This is where the, all the trust is brought. Um, it's, it's the foundation of trust is upon. It's upon God. Everything that we do in, in dealing as a friend, as a brother, as a sister, as a spouse, has to, the foundation has to be God. Read uh, chapter 19, verse 63. You said chapter, Psalm 1963? 119. Psalms 119, verse 63. Psalms chapter 119, and verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. So this is who your friendship and your bond should be with. Those that keep the commandments, and what? And thy precepts and keep the lord's precepts so this is when it says when you read earlier two are better than one in, in uh, ecclesiastes four and nine two are better than one 
that companionship has to be on them that are keeping the commandments of God. And the, that keeping is not because you're watching. It's because God is watching. Last verse, chapter uh, Psalms 37, verse 4. Psalms 37, verse 4 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 4. Come on. Delight thyself also in the Lord, mm -hmm. and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. This is very important. Scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he's going to give you the desire of your heart. So if you are sincere in wanting that, that brotherly bond, that brotherly friendship, that sisterly bond, that sisterly friendship, first trust in the Lord, and he's going to grant it unto you because it's sincere. It's not the friendship you're trying to uh, have according to your belly, meaning what you can, how you can um, get over on a friend, get over on a brother or a sister. Do you want to build your friendship on? If you're, if you're sincere in wanting to build a friendship, sincere in wanting a righteous marriage, husband or wife, guess what? The Lord will add it to you if you're trusting in him. Trust in the process he has set up. Read. Verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to give you that righteous husband. He's going to give you that righteous wife. He's going to give you that righteous brotherly bond and, and, and brotherhood and sisterhood if you do it as he said. It's just that simple. All right, Israel? I'm going to end it there. I pray we learn something and apply everything. All right, Israel? And with that, we say shalom. shalom, shalom.